Good hello. In this Sunday case study, I'm doing something very different. Instead of revealing who the person is, I'm going to keep the identity of this person's hands secret. What I will do, however, is explain that this person is a best selling author. I met with them at a book signing last week. They write historical fiction. That's about all. At least the only other thing that I know that you don't is this person's name, and I won't be revealing this. What I will be revealing is what their hands say about this person. They are left-handed, I should say that. That's the other thing I do know. But look at this intuition line here. So I'm going to be talking a bit about this. Also, I want to talk about the Good Samaritan lines, the fate line, and where this comes from, and just how and why it's so much stronger on the left hand than the right. And also, I want to talk about this little square scene up here. Notice as well how the heart line dives towards the life and the head line, where all three major lines merge. And there is also obviously a very large island on the left hand head and life line. And on the right hand, this same island, it would seem, is in a different sort of space and time. This likely indicates a same or similar event and how it's affected this person differently, internally and externally. So there's quite a bit to unpack here. So I'm going to explain what these Palmer markings mean at some point. But first of all, I want to talk about the chirognomy, that is the shape of this person's hands and fingers. Now, this person's hand is long, their palm is long, and their fingers are also long. I've measured the middle finger, the satin finger, against this one in particular on the left hand, against the length of the palm, and it is over seven eighths of the palm's length, so we know we have long fingers. The fingers themselves are a good thickness, and notice as well, and this is quite remarkable, the Mercury finger is almost as long as the Jupiter finger itself. That, I find, is quite tremendous. This person's capacity for learning and expression is almost as strong as their own identity, their own sense of the self. The Mercury finger is slightly pointed, especially when compared with the rest of the fingers. A pointed Mercury is always someone who has sharp expression, sharp literary skills. Cairo had uh, a somewhat pointed Mercury finger, and he was a highly prolific writer. You can check out my palm reading for Cairo. But the palm is long. The things are also long. The thumb is low set, heavy, but also long. This is the sign of the heron in Tibetan palmistry. In Tibetan palmistry, animals were often linked to palmer features, palmer markings to help understand palmistry better, and also the human psyche, character templates. Herons are observant, silent, solitary creatures. They are often quite beautiful and creators of beauty. They are quite difficult to get close to. People with this kind of formation, um, hand formation, you know, long palm, long fingers, with a, a very rectangular palm, often have very long limbs. And this is partly why they are marked as the heron. The low lying thumb is a sure sign of a humanitarian and possibly a book lover. All book lovers, in fact, have a low set thumb as far as I've ever seen. Hollow seems to sit quite high on the hand itself. And it's, you know, it's a long Apollo finger. All the fingers tend to, in one way or another, lean towards Apollo and Mercury. I'd say this person is a Mercurian. Uh, again, their sharp powers of expression hold them upright in terms of what defines their, their nature, their character, and their destiny. However, with Apollo being so long, reputation and their creative talents certainly are one of the, the key points of their character. And I think glory and that, that rise through fame even potentially is actually quite important to this person. Reputation and glory is quite important. The overall thickness of the fingers provides uh, someone with a very strong personality and skills and often a sense of sort of bluntness almost. Truth. I suppose life's a little bit too short for beating around the bush. Now, interestingly, notice how 
Apollo and Saturn lean away from each other at the tip on the right hand. Now, being that this person is left hand dominant, that would suggest that this person internally, they really require solace. Uh, there's, there's a need for introspection, I suppose. But more than that, they require being alone when they work. Otherwise, they are likely happy in uh, the company of lots of friends. Uh, and in social settings but when it comes to work they really require isolation and also the little finger veering away on the left hand implies this as well actually it's imperative this person has freedom uh, and isolation when they are expressing themselves in other words they need a quiet space so they can get all of these uh, many ideas that's seen here by the sheer length of the thumb here actioned by will and this sharp expressive communicative ability i suppose the only regrettable thing when looking at these fingers is the shortness of jupiter itself it does seem to provide some sense of reduction in self-esteem their ego perhaps has been damaged somewhat and i would put this likely down to this event early on in life which i'm going to Get around to explaining shortly but i just want to mention that at least mercury has not been stunted their communicative abilities hasn't been thwarted and i think that's really enabled this person there is something of a thickness to the basal phalanx of jupiter and i think that really implies control and probably um this person enjoys food as well i would think and when i say control i mean control over their environment i think this this person is probably uh, meticulous now i'm going to move on to the chirology that is the study of the lines in the hands and i'm just going to sort of work towards mm. this this person's mm. you know throughout the ages of this person's life and the first key event i notice here is where the heart line crashes into the head and the lifeline which i mentioned earlier and you can see this very deeply marked island here this event occurs anywhere between the age of 12 and 15. Now, where all three major palmer lines meet in the palms, Beryl Hutchinson said this is the sign of delayed shock of unresolved trauma in the hands. And if you look very closely on the right hand image, you can see the same thing. So this person has been affected both internally and externally. This is both emotionally and physically impactive. If it had not been for this event, I would actually think these Jupiter fingers would be a little bit longer. And I think it's worth mentioning here that the heavy set thumb um, does make it difficult for people with this sign to let go of past hurts. And in some ways, that's not altogether a bad thing because it enables us with a great experience and frame of reference, life experience, and perspective however no one should have to go through what the person has gone through here the second and almost just as tragic event here it seems to be quite a long-standing one on the left hand it seems to be from the age of 17 right up to 21 whereas on the right hand it seems to be 21 up to the age of 27 and it's a larger island it's more stressful it seems and what I think this is, is a, a period of great learning from the ages of 17 right up to 27. And it's affected this person in different ways. There's different stages to this great struggle. It's affected this person more internally from the age of 21 to 27. Whereas externally, it seems to have affected this person more from the age of 17 to 21. I should just mention... These images I took myself. I was in the queue for this book signing. I didn't have a book. And I put this best-selling author on the spot by saying I'm a reader of a different kind. I was intrigued as to what might lie in this person's hands, not just because they are famous best-selling author, but because of some of the things they spoke about. They talked about being potentially psychic and being very intuitive. And I thought to myself, I wonder what lies in this person's hands. 
And actually, I've just only now noticed a Solomon's ring. I have also obviously mentioned earlier on this line of intuition here. The combination of both is quite intriguing. But I just wanted to apologise for the sheer poor quality of these images. The lighting in this place was awful and I was a little bit rushed. Notice the headline after the age of 21 and just how strong and deep this marking is. This person was concentrating at an immense level after this time. And also there is an effort line from the age of, I would say, 25 onwards and another tremendous line here. And this is at 27. And this is a huge boost towards what this person wants to achieve. It's aiming in the place of ambition. And also notice another line coincides. And this is perhaps a deeper one. And what I find really interesting about this is that where it meets the headline, it sort of looks to strike or at least affect the fate line. And where it does, the fate line divides. There's a shift in this person's destiny at this time. And their fate line, it looks to deepen significantly at this time. And it doesn't stop there. This effort line seems to transpire into positively affecting this person's success as well. So what we can see here is at the age of 27, where this massive island ceases, we, we see a, a gigantic surge of success and happiness. And that is seen by, on the right hand, the effort line is just here. And it looks to, again, directly affect this person's success. Now, being that they're left hand dominant, the right hand shows this in a way that's positively promoting their sense of peace and prosperity, their happiness. What I find really interesting is on the left hand here, notice the fate line and around about the age of, I would say about even 17 or so, success stems from this line and it rises upwards. 17, as we've seen, is not an entirely happy time in this person's life, but from this negative, a tremendous positive has risen. You can even see on the right hand, the doubling of the fate line almost creates what looks like a gigantic island at the beginning of the origin of this person's destiny. And it's weighted this person down. It's created, again, this framework of experience and perspective in life. This person has utilized their awful experiences and managed to self-heal and actually create some sort of fortune out of the, the things that they have been through, which has enabled their perspective. And on that front, notice the headline. It forks quite greatly on the left hand. And where it does, this intuition line interestingly flows straight through it. It also forks on the right hand as well. This is, of course, known as the writer's fork. And what this does is provide perspectives. I say that with an S on the end because this person is very able to see many different angles at the same time, many different people's perspectives at the same time, enabling this person to write rich and varied characters. The age of 40, there is a big career shift, an advancement almost. And you can see that the career line becomes much stronger after this time. And this is overall due to this initial success at 27. So this stage of success in this person's life culminates at around about the age of 40. And it's a really lovely sign to see a fate line swing out towards a person's sun mouth. There's still work after the time, but it really shows us this indication of a person doing what they love, they're doing what they're good at, and they're making money from it. These are the three key signs of success. This advancement, this um, the culmination of success at age 40 is seen again here, is marked out by this effort line seen on the lifeline uh, just here. I would say it's probably early to mid 40s on the lifeline. And there seems to be the loyalty line points towards the lifeline at the age of around about 50. So there is likely some need to 
like come back home and visit family at this age or be be with family at this age for some reason there's loyalty towards family at this time and shortly after this time well actually at this time at age 50 there's a move of some sort so maybe that's a move back home at 54 i would say there's a, another move and this might well be a permanent move and i say that in part because the lifeline itself quite boldly swings out into new areas and it doesn't wrap itself around the base of venus and and this really shows someone who lives and dies not in their native land they they make some sort of permanent move a little further away quite a bit further away from where they were born so i've gone through you know the key events in life and i want to point out here look at the space between the head and the heart line it's consistently wide on both hands all throughout and what this shows us is someone who is open very open-minded not just open to possibilities but generous and warm spirit they have a healing stigmata and this is always seen on the hands of people who want to help not just heal and guide and counsel and lend an ear they want to help others and give back and it's often seen in the hands of people who are highly charitable i would think this person may well give quite a bit of money to charity and one of the signs of philanthropy in palmistry would be the heart line reaching right over onto the jupiter mount itself i would normally look for that in the right hand but because this person is left hand dominant you can see this heart line branching and reaching upwards onto the jupiter mount on the left hand you can see the makings of a solomon's ring here on the left hand somewhat completely formed as it's a little bit on a short side but you can certainly see it on the right hand innately this person has strong aptitude and understanding for learning of the occult sciences now this combined with this intuition line it cuts through is influenced by and or works with this person's writer's fork this ability to see more than one perspective this this intuition line here i find fascinating coupled with this on this ring because not only do they have an aptitude but they have a keen instinct as well they have that intuitive abilities and likely can automatic right they have that auto ability to you know with automatic writing because this intuition line is directly affected by or affecting this writer's fork their their intuition is guiding their perspectives or their perspectives is, is guiding their intuition the intuition line either governs us controls us or we can some way control it now the fact that this is a little bit wavy would suggest that their uh, psychological makeup has been damaged somewhat but it's not all that wavy and also notice how it's much stronger towards the end this person has gained an ability ha managed to harness their intuitive um, faculties as they've aged and this is why i come to this conclusion that this person is able uh, and gifted in automatic writing and something else i really i find absolutely fascinating here and that is the fate line because notice on the right hand it's not nearly as strong profound deeply marked as it is on the left hand and where we see it on the left hand this is a line of milieu by the way it's a bad luck line essentially and after this time we see tremendous luck which is why it directly seems to affect this person's success after this time but notice the fate line and just how deeply marked it is embedded in between both neptune and pluto now this is the overall overriding um, inclusive um, circumstantial dot in, in in this whole picture because what we see here is this person's fate coming from pluto ancestral memories but also neptune and ability to captivate and hold an audience this person's interest in the historical in their ancestors doesn't just lie with fascination it lies within their subconscious it is partly who they are 
and their ability to draw on that with their intuitive and their many perspectives, their expressive and literary uh, communicative abilities. It, it all is all connected because this this person is able to hold an audience, hypnotize almost with their immense storytelling power. And this is likely because, as you've probably heard me say in many of my other videos, a fate line like this shows someone who's come back from a past life with unfinished business, but they have that distinctive, direct connection to history. It's on a very subconscious level, but it's very powerful. It's there. So the only thing I can apologize for in this palm reading is the fact I will not be revealing this person's name. Otherwise, everything else I've spoken about is directly from what the hands have told me. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. If you'd like to learn with me, you can fortnightly by signing up for my level two membership. It's $4.99 a month. And with that, you'll have fortnightly lessons with me. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And also let me know who you would like me to read palms of next Sunday. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe.